Thank you for meeting with us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. This series is kind of about, um, you know, what it's like to live in the West End, and obviously you live in the West End right now. I do. Um, so could you tell me a bit about what that's like going from being a member of the council, a city councillor, and now being an MP, what that's like now? Um, it's quite a steep learning curve. I, I enjoy it, and it, 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 it's something that I'd always wanted. I was a nurse, I used to work part-time as a nurse and I also was an elected member of the council, I was a committee chair, I was quite a sen senior member of council, so I've gone from that. And Parliament, whilst there are a lot of similarities, it's on a much, much bigger scale, but I think it gives you a background and an insight to the structure of having members and officers and some of the committee work, that sort of thing, and speeches, standing up and making your point in, in public, which can be a bit terrifying sometimes. And um, you've done a lot of work with, with WIRA, um, specifically there was, there was Article 4 uh, being enacted as well. Uh, could you tell us a bit about how that sort of came about and the benefits you've seen since it's been passed? Um, the reason we wanted to have Article 4, um, I think all the councillors and, and WIRA and the wide, wider community, everybody was involved really. It was about having some, some balance in the community, some social sustainability, because it got so that there simply weren't enough families and all, all the people in the community and there was too large a concentration of students. When, when they all went home at Christmas or Easter or whatever, it's like a ghost town and of course it affects the school roles and things like that, you know, if there aren't as many children locally to go to the schools, it does have that effect. But one of the really beneficial things I think about Article 4 for everybody is that it also gave us more powers to, to chase rogue landlords and so, I mean, there'd be housing in the West End which really wasn't very good that now we've got more power to chase those landlords up, you know, because it's actually the landlords, the bad landlords, who are, who, are the, who are the bad guys in this, not the students or the local residents. It, I just think that sometimes students pay a huge amount of money for something that's actually not very good, and that's a debt that you're going to carry for a lot of years. Well, with as well, one of the things in Labour's manifesto in June, we said that we wanted to do a number of things with regard to pri private rented housing, and part of that was more secure tenancies, but also capping rates so that, landlords can't charge extortionate rents sorry not rates rents and also um, like a tenants charter so that you can report repairs and there's an obligation to get them done with a certain amount of time because that I understand that that doesn't always happen with the more reputable companies that's fine but with the little private ones and if you're a student and you haven't got much money you're often going to go for the cheapest aren't you and I worry sometimes about safety and standard of housing Definitely, yeah. Um, and going on to students from that, um, obviously Lincoln has quite a sizable student population and, um, you know, there, there was this kind of uproar with, with students voting a lot of Labour candidates in. Um, so I, I'm curious what uh, maybe steps you're taking to encourage the student population to, to be more integrated into the community um, and, you know, the, ben the benefits and, and uh, what's the word? Do you mean politically? Uh, just, just around like the West End, but also here in the city, like, uh, you know, how the steps maybe you've taken to integrate students more into the community. As a councillor, I used to try. We had something every year called Meet the Street, where you'd go along. It, it was in a number of venues, in, in Car Home, it was on West Parade, and it would be... Um, Everybody was invited and the councillors would go along and local residents would go along. There's actually another West End group called the West Enders. It's not just where there's the West Enders as well. Um, and you'd go along and have tea or coffee and cakes, that sort of thing, get to know your neighbours. I was part of something called the Carhome Community Forum and the Students' Union. I've got representation on that. That was about every six weeks we used to get together and talk about all community issues. I was actually the person that um, came up with the idea of the Car Home Gala. That's run for nine years now. Last year, the last gala is the only one that I haven't run. I, t I dreamed it up and I did all the running and all the planning and everything, with, with a bit of help from other people, admittedly, but it was essentially my baby. And now that I'm an MP, I'm really keen to keep... The students, obviously, were very politically engaged in the campaign. And regardless, seriously, regardless of who they vote for, I think it's really important to build on that. They should have a voice. Um, and I actually do surgeries over at the university now. I had my first surgery a few weeks ago because I'm a great believer in you shouldn't wait for people to always come to you. Actually, you should go out to them. And I think finally, during the debate last week, the votes at 16, I think it was an absolute disgrace that it was talked out. And I was sat there in the chamber for that debate and I did speak and, and say, you know, 
16 and 17 year olds should have the vote and it doesn't seem right to me that they're allowed to go out and campaign and be politically engaged but not vote and for me I mean it's a hundred years soon from women's suffrage isn't it and as well as that I think it's 1970 was was when we got the, the voting age down from 21 to 18 and for me this is the last step but apparently the um, the people on the government side of the house have effectively killed it for this parliament because I have tried to find out and I think that's shameful. More of a general question you've lived here all your life yeah. um, and you know it really well what yeah. kind of places would you go uh, recommend to students just coming in this year or, or the year before you know the pubs or the walks or anything like that obviously there's some common favorites uh, Queen the West has been mentioned quite a bit um, <laughs> but if, is there anything else that maybe that well my lo- I don't get to go out to the pub <clears throat> very much now my local was also Tap and Spile and I drink of course in the Labour Club we have quizzes and things so if we've got people who join Labour students and get involved you know they're very welcome to come along to our events um, where would I go there's the West Common there's the South Common there are the, the cathedral the castle there's all sorts of uh, wonderful places Definitely. The, I, I'm very involved with um, Visit Lincoln who promote Lincoln as a tourism destination you know and it's worth perhaps going on their website and having a look and seeing what they recommend there's lots to do Lincoln's got an awful lot, and, and the surrounding areas as well, actually. You you mentioned uh, before the camera's rolling about um, the homelessness uh, issue yes. in, in Lincoln. Yes. Um, now, obviously, as, as a student who's studied here for three years, you know, I've seen it, and uh, in first year, like, it's, it's a problem that I've, I've, I've dealt with, but what is your, your stance on it, and, and what steps have been taken since you've been elected to kind of curb that in a way? I think it's absolutely shocking that in 2017, in the world's fifth richest country, we've got homelessness and we actually need food banks. And I think the, the um, Paradise Papers have proven that actually austerity wasn't, we weren't all in it together. Some of us were in it, not some of us very definitely weren't in it, you know. And I think it proves that actually it was, it was a political and ideological stance rather than a necessity. And I think it's shocking that we've got homelessness. In August, Helena and I went out on the streets of Lincoln at 5am with a local support group because I felt that if I was going to talk about it from the benches, I needed to see it firsthand. And we came across 15 people in the immediate city centre. It was shocking. It upset us both. I remember saying to the guy that we were with, there were two guys we were with, you're poking those people to make sure they're alive, aren't you? And he said, yeah, we are. One of them needed an ambulance people had walked past him and left him he needed an ambulance he was bleeding and just the whole thing was absolutely shocking an awful lot of them have got mental health problems you know that there are a lot of issues out there to address definitely yeah um going on from you mentioned mental health um students do suffer a lot with mental health that is a big issue yeah i went over i visited the su and i had a tour of the university and i went into the welfare department bit and they were saying that um, they give students support with mental because it's obvious isn't it you're studying it's quite pressured you know that isn't gonna some people aren't going to cope with that and it's going to impact on the mental health but I was quite shocked to find as well that you've actually got your own food bank there aren't you when you think about tuition fees and the scale of debt that that imposes on people it shouldn't be surprising but and again I completely agree with the Labour Party view that we should abolish tuition fees and you know if we were taxing people a fair rate of tax then I don't believe that we would have any problem in doing that. I'm John McDonnell's private parliamentary secretary and we obviously have got plans and detailed figures the promises that we're making are fully costed and this argument we always said that nobody who earned less than £80,000 a year would pay any more tax and we were going to take the rate of corporation tax up to what is in line with other countries like France, Germany because they're paying around 30% give or take and ours has gone down now to 20 Labour would take that back up to 26% so we're not talking about over the top taxation we're talking about very real you know realistic plans and as I say with the, with the publication of the Paradise Papers over the last few days the stuff in the papers that just proves that we can afford it if people pay their fair rate of tax it's not about squeezing people and extortionate you know the demands it's about people paying a fair share because that's what that's what's wrong homeless people on the street and people using food banks it's not fair and just to kind of go on from a bit more of a cheery subject because that can bog you down uh Talk to me about what it was like sort of uh, 
when when the votes were cast. What was that like? Oh my goodness! Well, we didn't know on the night. We really didn't know until they told told us what the result was. We had to go down to the front of the stage, and I can't remember if it was around three a.m. or something like that. Now, and they told us what the result was, and I thought, oh my goodness. And my friends at the back were gesticulating wildly, trying to find out, and I couldn't tell them, I wasn't allowed to, I had to wait until it had been announced. I'd been chased by the press all night, because there was a bit of a whisper, and one of the Conservative camp actually said to me that they thought I'd won, and I said, well, until the result is in, I, you know, for me, that, that's when we find out. But it was just absolutely stunning, and we'd been up... We hadn't had a lot of sleep the night before and we'd been up like, oh my goodness, like the best part of 24 hours and we had to stay awake to do an interview up at, up at the Castle Square for 7am. But I think we were quite high as kites still from the, from the result, you know. <laughs> I can imagine, I can yeah, imagine, it was yeah. amazing. Yeah, And I think the wonderful thing about Lincoln, Lincoln normally goes, whichever way the country's government goes, Lincoln goes that way and we actually booked the trend which was amazing, and the fact that I'm an, I'm an ordinary person, I don't have a lot of money, I was a nurse, I live in a little two-bedroomed house in the West End, you know, I'm not somebody who's a high flyer. I've got quite a lot of experience politically, but I'm a different kind of MP, I'm a working MP, and I do still, I do one bank shift as a, as a nurse every sort of four or five weeks to keep my registration going. Because I want to maintain, I, I want to maintain my nursing skills, but I also want to see what's happening on the ground because I care very much about the NHS. In Lincoln, rather than I mean, in Lincoln, I'd really like people if they've got a problem to come to my surgeries. If they want to speak to me about anything, approach my office, come through Helena, and then like today, I can talk to people. You know, I want to be accessible and I want people to engage with me. I've offered to go over to the university, to the politics society, and debate with you know with people there or the politicians and speak to students just just come to me and ask me what you know if you want something i mean i'm interested to know really what what your issues are what what you think what do you think that i could be doing for you is that a rhetorical question you genuinely no, ask no, oh no. um i guess uh for me it is that homelessness issue just because yeah. I mean, in my first year, I um, we were tasked with a photography project and it has to be a, a live brief, so you have to go out and talk to people. And I chose homelessness and, and photographing homeless people, you know, working with the big issue or at the shelters, because, you know, I'm from kind of the countryside, sort yeah. of. So, you know, you don't deal with that. It's it's one of the negative aspects of city life. And, you know, it I, I chose it because it was it was new to me and it was kind of shocking but I think because of the size of Lincoln that kind of exemplifies it in a way Um, and yeah like you mentioned before I mean it's just kind of what are the steps going forward of like you know to 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 curb that problem I suppose. Building more houses a lot of the benefit sanctions have resulted in people being out on the streets um, giving parity to mental and physical health because that's a huge problem it's a huge part of um, homelessness it, it, it's all of those things Definitely. but it's looking at I, w- I was I've been talking to lots of children today in school visits and one of the, one of the visits centered on some children are doing some work around homelessness which I think is great I think it's good that children get engaged in that way and I was saying to them it for, for me it's been noticeable every morning when I go into work there's an entrance to the Houses of Parliament it's a side entrance and you're going into one of the grandest buildings in this country with all its splendour. But do you know what? Every morning I go past somebody who's laid on a piece of cardboard and has slept there all night. And they're there because it's actually quite warm in the subways compared to outside. But, you know, that that that, that contrast. Mm. He's on a bit of cardboard and now I'm going in there with all that pomp and splendour. And I'm absolutely shocked by the House of Lords that the splendour in there, you know, you see that. And it's just the contrast in our society. It's such an unequal society it's so very very wrong i'm glad to hear that young people do take that on board yeah 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 and and i think um obviously i can't speak for everyone for everyone uh, at my age age gap but you know there is more um there is more knowledge about it now like people aren't turning away from the problem they want to actually actively engage that's always good um just to kind of uh just sort of. You must take on board though this business because people accepted for seven years were all in it together and austerity was necessary. 
you know, and it sounded, it sounded to a lot of people, it sounded about right, really. But just lately, we found out that that's not actually true. It wasn't necessary, and I think it's really important that everybody recognises that it was a political choice. I'm curious what your your main objectives are for going forward from yeah. from this point. I mean, obviously, Lincoln. There's a lot of uh, building works because it's really yeah. <clears throat> developing into a kind of. Uh, when I started, I said I wanted to see better road and rail links. I wanted to see jobs and training for people in Lincoln more freely available because Lincoln traditionally has got a low skills, low wage economy. Those two things, housing to cope with the the homelessness crisis and also we get a huge amount of our mailboxes about people who are in the wrong sort of housing. You know, they've got a number of children and haven't got enough room in their bedrooms for them, that sort of issue. But for me, they're, they're the... They're, they're the, the tangible things that you see. But the other thing for me, absolutely, by the time I finish, and this is where you come in, because it might not be gone by the time I'm gone, but and it's something that can always come back. I don't want to see a world where people have to sleep on the streets in the fifth richest country in the world or when we have to have food banks. It simply isn't necessary and it isn't fair. Thank you for talking with me today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure's been mutual.